Hi, I'm Reagan, um, and the latest blog I have is with guest Sunny, and uh, we are going to be talking veganism and animal activism for my Cory Canine Massage blog. So Sunny, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So my name is Sunny. I have uh, two blogs, sunnygandera.com, where I write about um, everything related to plant-based and vegan lifestyle, um, questions that you might have, recipes, very based on, you know, focused on, on food. Um, and then I also have another blog called Arctic Grub, which uh, is actually uh, where I write about um, food from my homeland, uh, Norway, mm -hmm. and I veganize Norwegian food. Do you think that wouldn't be possible with all the smoked salmon and things like that? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I took on the challenge. So I are obviously originally from Norway, um, came to study in the US about you know, when I was 18. So that's 100 years ago now. But 28 mm -hmm. years later, I'm still here. Um, now I'm located in New York. Um, so I have my own online business uh, and uh, life coaching business, but I also work for a winery called Quechabella, which is in a Tuscan vegan organic and biodynamic winery. And I also am the wine director for Matthew Kenny uh, Cuisine, which uh, they are a national restaurant chain uh, focusing all on plant-based food. So I'm definitely busy enough, but um, yeah, so I have a background in international marketing. I worked in the music industry for 10 years um, in New York, worked with big stars. I tra traveled internationally and then um, I all of a sudden uh, decided that I had enough of that and then I went to culinary school and I trained to become a chef uh, met my husband when I was uh, working in a restaurant on the side he's also a chef and we started a catering company called Fork and Glass which is uh, sort of a farm to table catering company that I, we had for seven years nice and this is also uh, you know sort of kind of important in my vegan journey because I wasn't vegan then I've only been vegan for seven years okay uh, but during that time, I got really into studying more about wine. Um, so I got my diploma, my WSET diploma, which is a two-year, um, minimum two-year education in wine and a preface to the Master of Wine, if you want to go that far. And so I, you know, my life now is pretty much all about food and wine and animals and, and vegan uh, cooking. So yeah, that's me. Terrific. Well, full disclosure, I am not a vegan. I am working towards reducing meat uh, over time and, and uh, something I'm working towards. So this is all very interesting to me and many, many, many people like me. So could you please tell me, what were the foods that you, you did love growing up? You know, obviously this would have been when you were not a vegan. And yeah. um, as well, tell me what you'd like to cook now, best of all. Yeah, sure. So one of my favorite things uh, was this potato dumpling soup that my mom would cook on this. Uh, it was cooked on milk and meat bones. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't sound very appealing, uh, but Norwegian food is very simple and rustic. And it's based on basically a lot of leftover foods. We used to be a very poor country, not anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also love meatballs and mashed peas and uh, this rich sour cream porridge that we had that was served with charcuterie and flatbread. So as you can tell, it was a big um food lover ate everything you know all animal-based foods up until like i said seven years ago but i also loved when my mom made um these um this greek moussaka because um we used to have a house in spain we traveled a lot in europe so i had uh, some of those like sort of what i think is exotic in you know international foods and this deep dish pizza that she would make with oregano and that wasn't you know that wasn't very common back in the 70s and 80s when i grew up in little old norway but um yeah. Yeah, so those were some of my favorite, um, favorite, favorite food memories. Um, today, my palate has definitely expanded. Um, I have to say that uh, my favorite is probably Mediterranean food, like Greek, Italian, Spanish, Southern French, um, using because they use seasonal and fresh ingredients, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, lots of colorful vegetables, grains, legumes. Um, and I also love the tapa style cooking of Spain because I find that smaller dishes and snack style foods are much more exciting, more variety. So um, yeah, so I would say Mediterranean, Italian, of course, all the pasta. Yeah, uh, as you can tell, I'm like, I love food in general. I, it's hard for me to pin it down, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's quite all right. I feel the same way. And yeah. perhaps, uh, perhaps later at the end of our discussion, would you be willing to share a recipe? Yeah, of course. I'm happy to. That yeah, would be yeah, terrific. Yeah. And I can also put it in the text part of my blog with your permission. So, you know, people <laughs> don't have to try to write it down <laughs> while yeah, you're right? speaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, 
what reasons do you think that people become vegans and what are your specific reasons for becoming vegan? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I find that the term vegan is often used to kind of blanket state as a blanket statement for everybody. And I just want to make the distinction between being vegan and plant-based. Yes. You're a lot of plant-based these days. So the latter, a plant-based person is someone who basically just eats plants um, and follows mostly a plant-based diet. It can have some non plants in it actually which i didn't really know until recently oh. um, that's why it's called plant based versus, you know so these people typically do it because of health reasons yeah. i find um, but being vegan that means um, essentially eliminating animal products from your life um, including wearing using and being entertained by animals right so no zoos no wearing fur silk wool uh, using any beauty products that have either been <laughs> on animals or have animal ingredients in them because funnily enough sometimes I see um, it's something just to be FYI if you're really uh, preoccupied with this is it says cruelty free and then you see on the ingredients it says honey or some 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 sort of animal ingredient in it so right. cruelty free doesn't necessarily mean it's animal free so there's all kinds of things there but in any way I digress um, no this just, uh, being vegan is more a, f a life philosophy which includes then ethics morals and um, and politics many times um, so to answer your question those people who who become vegan they've essentially aligned their innermost values with their behavior right so meaning they have bared witness to the cruelty that's been happening to animals uh they've really gone through the regret and remorse we often do that you know we feel guilty oh my how could i you know afflict inflict and i didn't know and so they've gone through this whole process and then finding peace and committing to then taking that action to um that is in concert with their feelings essentially and with their true self. So it's very difficult to hold two beliefs, right? Uh, if you then realize that animals feel pain mm -hmm. and then that we're causing them to suffer. So that's the discord that many people feel. And that's why a lot of people are like justifying, but I only eat animals that are grass fed or uh, backyard chickens, you know, because we need to feel like we're not horrible human beings. And I don't believe that human beings are, uh, wanting to be no. hurting other people no. but these people who decide to go vegan finally and take that step they've made that connection and they can no longer live sort of out of line with um with what they feel deep down and and truly you know this is what they think is the most compassionate compassionate way to live i see yeah. and you know in terms of my specific reasons i'm vegan for the animals um so i simply believe that it's wrong to inflict pain uh, torture and unnecessary death on living beings uh, that otherwise want to and have the right to live um, this is sometimes a very sort of drastic thought to some but um i really believe that uh i don't i don't want to inflict pain or death on anybody just so i can in, in sort of enjoy five minutes of pleasure on my plate or wear a certain kind of outfit yeah. um, in today's world you know we know by now i hope that there's no need to eat animals um, to get all the nutrients we need there's a ton of variety there's so many um products coming out uh, but to be 100% on, honest, I would actually be vegan even if it wasn't healthy because that's how much I love animals and uh, believe in their right to, to live free as, as many humans can. Uh, but luckily for me, a plant-based diet is the healthiest way too. So it's kind of a win-win situation for me. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> totally. It's great. Yeah. It's a great thing, and which yeah. I fully, fully respect and uh, am, am working towards myself, you know, as, as I mentioned. But, um, but yeah, I really, really it's respect it. I am inspired yeah. by uh, you and and other other vegans who I will be talking to actually in other episodes. Awesome. Um, now tell me, okay, um, you've you've told me uh, basically what being vegan means to you. Um, how does it affect your cooking? I mean, that may seem like an obvious question, but I mean, <laughs> in particular, it obviously changed some of the Norwegian um, background aspects. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I wanted to touch a little bit more about what being vegan to me means because Absolutely. I feel like that's how I, I, how I teach. I shouldn't say teach, but coach people because yeah. many times people feel that vegans are judgmental and you have to be perfect and they feel very scared to even dive in or I have to go all out in yeah. nothing. And that's why a lot of people don't do it because 
it's too much of a change. So with you, it's a process. You say, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of eliminating some meat from my diet. And I think that's wonderful. I don't coach people to just uh, drop everything overnight because I find that as with anything else, it doesn't last. You know, humans are, change is difficult. So I, like I said, I, I believe that being vegan means not wanting to harm any other sentient beings. And I do believe that other humans infinitely, they just definitely think so too, but they've just been conditioned to think otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so being vegan to me, means that I basically, my ethics are reflected in the choices that I make. Um, so on a daily basis, right? It means um, living with an integrity. So this is something I've gotten from, I, I should mention her because I take a lot of what I'm, I'm, I'm sharing from Colleen Patrick Goudreau. She's okay. a vegan activist and also a cookbook author. And she's all around fantastic. She's in California. So I'm happy to give you the link so you can share it to yes, your please. viewers. Um, she's just a very socially um, active and also very um, aware person that talks about in a, a compassionate and kind voice that can apply to everybody, even though you're not even considering going vegan. But in any event, um, you know, it's, it's, it's living with integrity in a world that really values convenience mm -hmm. and also, um, you know, momentary pleasure, right? Over yes. wellness. And so being vegan is not the end goal. It's actually a means to an end, which means that, you know, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I make imperfect choices every day. I'm sure I make choices unaware, you know, to me that I might hurt another being, but it means, um, you know, it really means uh, not being better than anyone else, because I think a lot of people think that vegans mean, uh, think that they're better. It doesn't mean that I'm better than anyone else. It just means that I'm better than I was yesterday and the day before. And so, you know, it means really doing the best you can with the information you have, with the means you have, and do the least possible harm uh, to someone else. Uh, being 100% vegan, unfortunately, isn't possible in today's world because we've just using and abusing animals in every single thing you wouldn't even imagine them. like wine right i work in wine business and many people don't think wine is vegan uh is not vegan right because it's just grapes and yeast but then we find out there's egg whites there's fish album and fish you know okay. gel gelatin all these yeah gelatin yeah. so it's really uh, you know again it's it's really just about sort of tapping into your you know compassion and acting accordingly but um you know and 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 just you know being good and kind, like I think most people are, um, we, we want to ch choose basically our true moral values, have the, have the audacity to live like that instead of being like everybody else, like, right? Because it's, this is the way it's always been, we're eating animals. It's really difficult to stand out because we are the minority, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's about breaking away from that mindlessly following the masses. Yeah. And, and, and just connecting with your feelings. And that takes a lot of gut and to stand out and be different. Right. Absolutely. Um, and it's really about, you know, wanting, just being, setting an example of how you want the world to be. So that to me has been an exercise in, you know, courage. Yes. But also, um, you know, living when you have seen the light, so to speak, and then having your loved ones, which I always find is the difficult part because I have friends and family who I love dearly and respect immensely but they're just not there yet but you yeah. can't force it you know i can't make anyone vegan right. uh, i can't make anyone anything you know you just have to sort of speak your truth and hope you inspire someone and so that was my long-winded um answer but i just want to uh, sort of emphasize that i am not judging i i'm just here to tell you my story and how i view it now and how i was and i can totally relate to everybody eating i was a nose to tail girl i ate everything and i was a <laughs> chef before i was vegan so you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I know where, what it's like. So Excellent. in terms of my cooking and to go on to that question, yeah, um, I don't feel like it's affected me at all because I'm still obsessed with infusing as much flavor and as possible into my dishes. And, um, and that's done by herbs, spices, cooking techniques. It's not when you think of just a, let me just be graphic here, a big slab of meat or chicken. You know, nobody would just eat that raw with nothing on it. It's how you prepare it. It's either roasting, the bracing, the barbecuing, and the, you know, marinades, you put it on it. So basically, um, the one difference now I feel, I, I guess I feel different about it, is I feel great about, it, and I love every single step of the cooking process, knowing I didn't inflict any pain on anything. And my food is vibrant and alive and colorful. It's not dead and brown and <laughs> lifeless. You know, this yes. is like, you know, just how I feel. So yeah, I just feel like my dishes also taste a lot more like love and life now um, because I do infuse so much more um, of that into it. So 
many hear the word vegan and they think, oh, what is that? As if they've never had vegan food. But I mean, if you've had guacamole, if you've made hummus, uh, roasted potatoes, hey, surprise, yeah. surprise, you've been eating vegan food, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Fair. I, I always say food is food, so yeah. Excellent. It's, yeah. it's food, uh, made with love. Yeah. Just infusing that in there, that sounds particularly excellent to me. It's very important. It yeah. makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I bet. And that is obviously an easier thing to infuse when you are not abusing anything. Uh, there's yeah. not, nothing got abused in the process, as you say. Yeah. No yeah. more. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, um, so you, you did touch on this a little bit, but could we go deeper into getting all the nutrients you need as a vegan? A lot of um, non-vegan people, they use this as an excuse and an argument uh, against going vegan. Um, you're always uh, hearing that, oh, you know, it's impossible to stay healthy that way from, you know, people who are resistant um, and or that it's a delicate balance. What's the reality? Yeah, so I think that, you know, it's definitely a myth that started, uh, of course, it's perpetuated by the meat and dairy industry that uh, plant-based food isn't healthy or, or, or sufficient because we, are, we have this obsession with protein, not just here in the United States and in Canada, but everywhere in the world, right? It's like protein is, you know, and, and meanwhile, yeah. you see anybody with protein deficiency laying around in hospitals? No, but you see people with heart disease, with cancer, with all these things that are, uh, you know, definitely animal products have contributed to, right? So um, I think that, you know, I n I've never heard that fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, and legumes were bad for you. In fact, that's what doctors say you should eat more of, and you should limit meat consumption. But somehow we've been skewed, and there was a couple of, like, now it escapes me, but there's a book that was out, especially, this was back, I think is even as far as the 1980s, maybe even sooner, but uh, earlier, but she was saying something about, um, plant-based foods were not uh, complete proteins, that you couldn't get all the essential amino acids, because that's essentially what we're talking about when we're yeah. talking about, um, you know, protein, right? Yes. So that, you know, you could, you have to combine food, like, you know, in order for, for it to be a complete meal and a healthy meal, you had to eat rice and beans, for instance, which isn't okay. true, because tell me, you know, let me tell you, the body is way smarter. So as long as you eat, and I can't highlight this enough, but as long as you eat a variety of food, which you should do anyway, even if you're meat-based yeah, uh, or, you know, uh, or, or a meat eater, is yeah. that eating a variety of colors, for instance, colorful vegetables, because they all have different vitamins and minerals, but you don't need to eat all of it on in one day. As long as you just distribute it over, you know, a week or a period of time, the, the body it will adjust, it will save and hold on to some minerals and give it to your body when you need it. If you eat too many vitamins, it's going to be excreted out. So it's like people who are like shoving C vitamins in their mouth like crazy thinking Just that's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a lot of that. So I think that um, just, just knowing that all plant-based food contain... Uh, Consumed, uh, typically consumed as protein, uh, contain all the essential amino acids um, uh, that we need. And as long as we eat enough calories, which is also a problem because many people are used to constricting their food. But remember, plant-based food, um, if you're eating whole food plant-based, mind you, not if you're eating processed vegan, because you can be an unhealthy vegan and eat you know, survive on, like I always say, French fries and Coke, and that's vegan, but it's not necessarily <laughs> healthy for you, right? And very calorie dense. Mm -hmm. But if you're eating whole foods, plant, uh, whole food, plant-based food, many times, you know, you think you're eating enough, but, and then you go and you count up all the energy or the calorie and you're like, oh my God, I've only eaten a thousand calories because they're used to sort of measuring your food, which you don't really need to do, um, right. especially not when you're eating vegetables and fruit, right? I've never heard anyone get fat because they ate too many apples, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, so it's really about putting things in perspective. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just trying to imagine, like, yeah. I suppose one should never eat too much of anything over a long right. period of time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you won't get fat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's the whole attitude, especially I find as a Norwegian here in the United States too, that, you know, more is more, more is better. So like if something is healthy for you, we have to just like go crazy and eat everything. Or if it's unhealthy, don't eat it at all. And that's right. another thing that may sound weird as a health coach, but I always find that if you're saying no, this and no, this, that all I want is to eat that, you know, like people's mind works in that. So I said, you know what, if you want a piece of cake, have it as long as you don't have it every morning for breakfast or every night, right? But like yeah, if you moderation. Want a piece of cake, it's like, okay, there's a lot of maybe oil and sugar in that one piece, but like how often are you going to eat it? 
right. I understand people with who are uh, emotional eaters and have issues with food. That's a totally different mm -hmm. story. I'm not talking about those people, but normal people, because I think we've swayed away and I'm driving into a whole other area, more nutrition now than veganism, but uh, we just need to go back to eating, uh, eating the way we used to, just to kind of, you know, eat enough, but not like indulge and use it too much, you know, because we use it to soothe ourselves or comfort ourselves and in, in ways we shouldn't. And of course, that's in an ideal world. But basically, yes, there is no worry whatsoever that if you're on a plant based diet, you're not getting enough nutrients or protein or any of what you might need for for for, for proper health. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So um, switching a little bit, uh, I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about the sustainable farming and food thing and what that means with the whole, uh, if it fits in with veganism and you. Of course. I mean, I'm, I'm very much into that and, you know, it's incredibly important. And I think it goes hand in hand with being vegan. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's all about living and leaving the planet in a better place than we found it uh, and not wreak havoc on it for future generations. Right. So um, many humans think we can just take and use anything and, you know, they wish without a concern for how it'll affect uh, the future generations. But, um, you know, animal farming, as we probably, if you have done any bit of reading and especially factory farming is anything but sustainable, right? So the, it isn't, it isn't sustainable and it's not something that can, we can sustain. Uh, and we see it now, unfortunately, in many other things where people are getting a little bit more creative with animal usage and we're in this very strange time now with the COVID-19 and, and, and it all stems, all these flus that stems from eating animals and, and, and caging them in and, and, yes. and keeping them in their unnatural environment. So uh, the word sustainable though, I find has become very convoluted, very sort of washed out. And I don't feel that it really means anything anymore. When you look at it, sustainable, there's no regulation around it like organic. Uh, and I especially see that in my business, which is the wine business. I've spent a lot of time visiting vineyards and talking to uh, wine growers and on how they farm. And I even spoke to one person, I'm not going to name names, but somebody was in, in California that called himself sustainable. And I found out that he sprayed with Roundup. And so I'm thinking, how is that sustainable? And he said, well, I have to, to sustain my business. <laughs> I was like, that's a different sustainable, it's sustainable now because we use the word. But, uh, I'm bringing that up just because be very careful uh, because many people use Roundup, many people spray, um, uh, even though they say it's organic, you know, sometimes you use copper, which is a heavy metal, you know, we could go into that. But, you know, it's all about the soil and the soil becomes dead and lifeless and then nothing else can grow in it or things grow very strange in it. Yes. Um, so the best thing you can do as a consumer is really to get to know your local farmer, to eat more local and seasonal ingredients. So eat vegetables when they're in their season, because it's all obviously also going to reduce your carbon footprint and many other things, but and yes. support your local community, mm -hmm. um, you know, help help the businesses there especially in these days, we really do need that. But really that's forming a relationship with your farmer, him or her. Uh, you can get firsthand knowledge of how your food grows, um, what's being done to it and where it comes from. And that's really powerful. And that's um, something we've lost as humans. We've lost connection with food. You know, we just go and we buy it in a pretty wrapped cellophane wrapped thing and, and, the, and nobody knows what a carrot looks like anymore. <laughs> younger kids you know couldn't identify a vegetable if it saved their life not all of them but many kids i've seen as like oh i don't I have no idea what an artichoke looks like you know because there is no connection so yeah um and i also find that in terms of sustainability i'm also encouraged by uh, what i see in the plant-based meat industry now so there's of course beyond meat impossible meat and you can say so many things about it but I do feel like this is not the, these are not products for vegans, but they're products for people who want to, like you, maybe oh, reduce bridge. your consumption yeah. of meat. And, but you still, you know, you crave that meat, but you just want to help the planet and help your health. Um, it's a great way to sort of transition. And I think that's really going to be a big um, part of uh, the solution because yeah. we do have to farm differently and we, we have to stop uh, raising animals the way we do. Just no matter if you agree with veganism or not, it's, the proof is in the pudding. It's um, the world's going to hell if we continue. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. We we yeah. need a revolution. <laughs> yeah. Just absolutely. Being forced upon us to an extent. I hope with COVID nineteen yeah. because it would just be so wonderful if there's a number of um, potentially positive outcomes that could come from this, which I'm 
crossing my fingers for and hoping for yeah uh, that's uh, this kind of thing is is one of them to do with climate change um and sustainability and um the food we eat and uh, yeah and veganism yeah um now, uh, before I, I get uh, to the animals, um, you mentioned wine basically can't be vegan. Um, mm. but are there some that are more or closer than others? Well, so there's two parts of uh, you know, wine when you think of it being vegan. And the most important, or actually not the most important, I shouldn't say, the most um, covered area is in the fining process of the winemaking. So when you press the juice, it will sort of uh, need to be clarified or it doesn't always need to be clarified but what some farmers or uh, winemakers rather will do is to uh, drop in an egg white or some type of uh, other disgusting things like fish bladders gelatin <laughs> whey uh, milk proteins basically they they draw out those particles that are floating around in the wine and that consumers don't want to see mm. um, technically everything is precipitated out but the idea is then that there can be some leftover um, in the wine and there's never a guarantee that it's completely gone but also as a vegan you know you don't want to support an industry that uses any animal products in the making of the wine right uh, they never talk about it most vineyards because it's not very sexy right oh yeah we use egg whites and fish bladders to uh, you know produce your wine so you will see very few things about it which is why it's very important again to know your product to know who makes your product so you can go and ask these questions and they will tell you um, many times they'll maybe sort of nonchalantly say oh yeah it's been done for hundreds of years but there's several people including the winery I work for we don't use any animal products the second part is in the soil and this is something that can and can be a little controversial because people say well organic farming when you eat organic vegetables many times in the soil you use fertilizers that contain manure Mm -hmm. And what's wrong with manure, you say, because animals have to poop. But the thing is, it's not like you're envisioning these two or three cows grazing and they're pooping and that's it. Now they get basically trucked in from factory farms who want to get rid of their manure. Yeah. So you have, you know, all the antibiotics, the hormones, all the crap that animals are ingested in the poop. And you're putting that in your healthy soil to create a clean wine. I don't think so. So... Mm -hmm. But most vegan certifications, at least what I know that are available now, they do, don't take into consideration this part. So um, then people say, well, you're eating vegetables and that contains manure because manure is more organic than, say, any other synthesized chemicals, you know, processed chemicals, right? Um, so, you know, it's, uh, we definitely have a long way to go. And I, as a vegan, I, I said before, I wasn't a perfect vegan. I do drink non-vegan wine because I am in studying uh, wine. So I will um, drink. And my philosophy is if these byproducts wouldn't exist if we didn't kill animals to begin with for meat. So this is just a way of using up all the leftovers and being economical and, and, and responsible about it, right? But um, I try as much as I can. And on my channel, you'll only see me featuring vegan wine. So uh, you won't you won't have to worry about that. But personal, I'll full disclosure, I will taste this so I know, so I can also see if there's a difference in the flavor, which I haven't necessarily found too much of. There is and there isn't, but that's a whole other interview. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> okay. No problem. And excuse my dog who's getting a little excited. <laughs> Maybe for the content. I don't know. Time. She she wants, with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. She wants her moment to, yeah. to chip in as well. But, <laughs> but speaking of animals like her. Um, I wanted to move a little bit to the animal activism side of veganism. What yeah. do animals mean in your life, first off? And then, um, you know, feel free to talk about any, um, any aspect of activism you feel you'd like to that uh, is a part of your life. Yeah, sure. I mean, as I said, I'm vegan for the animal. So to me, animals are everything. I mean, they're the most beautiful creatures to me. I think without them, I, I wouldn't exist. I mean, I just, life wouldn't be the same. They teach me what unconditional love means um you know they show you what happiness looks like kindness forgiveness you know how to appreciate small things in life and be excited about the smallest things you know <laughs> it really puts everything in perspective and um especially i have two dogs you know and i see them being so protected they're mastiffs of course they're very guard dogs right. but see how loyal they are and and also on the flip side you know you see people you know dogs who have been abused by people are still so trusting to uh, <laughs> you know, humans. So they really, they've to me exemplify uh, the most beautiful thing in life. Um, honestly, I can't imagine a life without animals. And I, that's why I'll fight to my last breath for their right to live free as, as, as we humans are able to. 
um, just being free, happy, surrounded by love. You know, they, 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 they deserve a place on this planet as much as we do. And that's what we need to go back to. Like there's no, I'm higher on the food chain and all this other crap you hear, uh, which is again, why we're so out of touch with uh, nature and, and the planet and why we're in this mess we are in right now with, a, with the coronavirus and among other things. But I'm incredibly grateful for animal activists. Uh, I think without them, we wouldn't be halfway where we are today. Um, I personally haven't attended any vigils or any sort of uh, state side or street side protests, but that's actually one thing I do want. I, I, I have a goal to step up my activism this year and I'm considering attending um, some marches and really um, volunteer to contribute more um, about educating the public about animal abuse and what goes on in factory farms and where their food comes from and things like that. Uh, up until now, I've done most of my activism in the kitchen uh, where I feel I've been most useful because that's where I can use my talents and I, you know, I really love cooking and, and, and just feel lit up doing just that, you know, and at the end of the day, I'm, I'm doing all this for the animals. So uh, I'm going to always support animal activists, but I find it very, um, it's a very, um, satisfying to show people that you know wow plant-based food can be not only as delicious but even tastier because to me my life my view just widened after I became vegan I thought I was like oh my god I'm gonna just have to eat beans and rice now for the rest of my life right I mean I honestly thought that and I was fine with it because I'd made the choice for the animals I was like if I have to eat one thing and be bored as much as I love food I'll do it but then I just realized oh my god like how wrong was I now I actually have a million other choices, right? And um, and getting people like my husband too is a hardcore. Like he's never going to go vegan, but he loves what I cook and he he takes inspiration from it. So I think that you know if I can inspire someone to at least eat one less meat based meal per week or even per month, I've done my job. So excellent, yeah. fantastic. And speaking of that, if you could share a recipe, that would be lovely. Yeah, so I have a ton of recipes on both my sites, sunnygandera.com and, um, and uh, Arctic Grub. But what I think I will do is I will share a recipe from, I have two eBooks that are on, available for purchase, but what I'm gonna do if you're not ready to purchase those, I will share a recipe for a chickpea scramble that I have, uh, which is like you said, have to be easy and it has to be with ingredients that everybody can find. And you know, I'm not one of those that are gonna you know, de demand you to buy all these weird names on yes. the internet. You know, so basically all it is, it's cut up, um, it's cut up vegetables, uh, some, you know, whatever, if you like mushrooms, but it's onions, garlic, you know, you can put um, broccoli, uh, you basically smash up a can of chickpeas in there. So and then you add a little turmeric spice. So I would always suggest that maybe, um, you know, invest in like eight to 10 different spices that you can keep in your rack. And then that's a way to really make the meals taste different every day too, trying different things. Cool. And then you just have some onion, garlic powder, some turmeric, maybe a little smoked paprika, and then a little bit of what we call the golden flakes of in the vegan world, which is nutritional yeast. It's not yeast as in the baking, yeah. uh, but it's got a cheesy flavor. So you add that in and then you can serve it with roasted potatoes. And the great thing why I want to share that is because you can repurpose it the next day. So many people are like, well, I don't really cook very much. So I say, I instill this thing called uh, cook once, eat twice. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do like a, a scramble one day and then the next day you can fold it into a tortilla and have a burrito or put it on tacos or even just like throw it in some other, you know, stir fries and, and, and repurpose it the next day. So hopefully that's, you know, going to be... Um, be suitable for everybody. Well, that sounds like something. Um, my husband is is the cook of the house, and it okay. sounds like something he would he would enjoy. So awesome. that's okay. just going to give that a go. Yeah, Fantastic. I'm going to encourage him. Excellent. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I love the delegation. You know. Yeah. Well. Yes. Know, I, yeah. I just I don't enjoy cooking. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm. You know, you have to. You know, have to share what, wherever you your talents. Or I say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting with me today, and um, I will I will put that recipe in the text as well of the blog. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Sunny. It's been great. Thank you, Regan. Thanks for having me. Thank you.